So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you have gone through all the videos and you have solved problems and you have understood a lot about magnetism now. You know how to find the magnetic field due to a current carrying wire, whether it's a straight wire or a circular wire or wire of any shape, right? You can take a small elements and you can find the magnetic field because of that wire at an observation point. All that is good. One thing you must be observing is that uh, there is some similarities between our study of electrostatics and what we are doing here in magnetism, right? See, in electrostatics, there was electric field and now we have magnetic field. In electrostatics, we spoke about uh, electric dipoles. Here we have magnetic dipoles, right? There are many similarities between the two subjects. Uh, there is another similarity, which is like super strong similarity. And if you connect to it, then you would see that uh, electrostatics is just a kind of a different version of magnetism or vice versa, whatever. So this is called Ampere's law. Okay. But before actually understanding Ampere's law, we have to understand something called as the circulation of magnetic field. And after I have taught this topic completely, I've spoken about it. Then I'll try to draw that similarity, that analogy between both of them so that you can, you know, feel it more. So you know about magnetic field now, right? Magnetic field is a vector and you can have magnetic field in a space like a vector field. You can have every point in a space having a magnetic field. Uh, you know, uh, you can associate a magnetic field. That's what I mean to, to a point in space with an arrow showing the direction of the magnetic field and the length of the arrow showing with the magnitude of magnetic field, right? That's how you represent a vector field. Now, if in this field, you take any curve, take a curve like that, right? And you define a small element in that curve, say DL, right? Uh, an element like that. And if you do this, that you find the dot product between the magnetic field and the DL, B dot DL, and you integrate it over the entire loop, you get a quantity called as the circulation of magnetic field over that curve. Absorb that circulation of magnetic field over that curve. Okay. So remember, uh, well, in electrostatics, we had an idea called the flux of the electric field. The flux of an electric field was defined over a surface. Remember that fluxes are defined for surfaces and circulation is defined for loops. So just as in the case of electric flux, where we just chose some surface, right? It was an imaginary surface and we had a field, the electrical field. Right? It was it was a vector field and we defined the electrical flux as E dot dA and the integral of that over that surface. Similarly, in case of magnetism, we don't take an area, we take a loop and we have a magnetic field there. Instead of taking the area element which used to take in the case of area, we take a DL element. This is a length vector okay, along that loop and we just find B dot DL, the dot product of the magnetic field with that DL and we integrate it over the entire loop. okay. This is nothing but a uh, line integral. You will learn about it later, maybe not in 12th, maybe when you go to engineering. But this is called a line integral where you integrate a vector over a line, over a curve like that. Okay, Line doesn't necessarily mean a straight line. What we mean by line here is a, a curve. Okay, So it should, should be technically called a curve integral. That's what we are trying to find. So this is the circulation of magnetic field over any curve. Okay, And what would this B dot DL will give you? This B dot DL is nothing but the uh, projection of B in the direction of DL multiplied with DL, right? So the integration of B dot DL just gives you a summation of this value of magnetic field at that point, which is tangential to that uh, curve multiplied by the length of the curve. That's what it gives you. You add up all such elements and you get the circulation of magnetic field over that curve. So now we have established that what we had as electric flux over a surface, right? Similar thing we have called as the circulation of magnetic field, but over a loop, right? So that is one similarity which you should be able to see, right? The second thing is, what did we do with this flux? We did nothing. We came to a law, right? We, we came to the Gauss law and we defined Gauss law as the flux of electric field over a closed surface is was equal to the charge enclosed by epsilon naught, right? So this this was a very useful uh, law. If you remember, we we used it to find the electrical field because of a lot of symmetrical uh, distribution of charges, right? And uh, Anand must have also told you that it is uh, as fundamental as the Coulomb's law itself, right? So this flux led us to understand the Gauss's law. Now similarly, the circulation of magnetic field over a curve 
now over a closed loop closed surface closed loop okay over a closed loop right which is equal to the permeability of vacuum which is mu naught times the current enclosed that is i enclosed okay let us understand this for a moment this says that if you take a closed loop okay you know that circulation of magnetic field can be defined for any curve so it can be definitely defined for a closed loop okay for you take a closed loop there's some magnetic field in the region right you take a dl element and you do this integration of b dot dl now that you're doing it over a closed loop you get that circle another similarity now that is equal to mu naught into i enclosed the current enclosed inside it okay let's say this value uh, let's say there's a situation like this okay where you have two current carrying wires like that then i can say that this integration of b dot dl will be equal to i1 plus i2 okay so that is what is the ampere's circuital law is so ampere's law states that the circulation of magnetic field over a closed loop is equal to mu naught times the current enclosed okay so let's uh, see how to apply this uh, ampere's law and what does it actually mean when we say that a current enclosed within a loop and how do you take that dl element and how do you actually do this this is like a very abstract could be very you know appearing very abstract to you this law so let us go and uh, deal with this in detail for more videos and live lectures on the jee click on the subscribe button now